Have you ever wondered why subs and torpedoes have a blunt nose instead of a pointy one like most aircraft? Thanks to advances in aerodynamics, a branch of physics that deals with movement of objects in the air, we know that having a pointy nose of a fighter jet can reduce the amount of drag in the air. But when you're underwater, it's a different story. For a sub to move efficiently underwater, you have to strike the right balance between slicing through the water and minimizing the surface area of the nose. This means if you have a long, thin, and pointy nose, you get more friction along the whole length of the nose, even though it slices the water easily. You see, pointy noses are a source of residual stress, which is okay when you're flying in the air, but not so much when you're underwater. Remember, subs have to dive hundreds of meters deep in water, so you don't really want your pressure vessel to have points of failure which is why a round, blunt nose is best suited to withstand the high pressures underwater. That's called spherical objects naturally form when an object is experiencing pressure from all directions. I mean, there is a reason why bubbles are spherical. Fun fact, did you know the speed of some nuclear subs is limited not by the availability of propulsion power, which is kind of infinite thanks to the energy-rich uranium used as fuel, but it is actually determined by the ability of the hull to withstand pushing aside tons and tons of seawater. But that's not the only thing you need to worry about when designing the physical shape of a sub's nose. The other big limitation comes from the fact that subs need a sonar system to navigate its way around the deep. For most modern subs, this sonar system is located inside the bulbous bow section at the front, and there's no way you could fit all the transducers and sensors in a pointed nose. This means, ultimately, you need a trade-off between what nose shape gives the best acoustics and what shape best reduces the amount of drag. So, most modern subs trying to find a balance between good hydrodynamic performance and having a usable sonar. After all, that deep, where no rays of the sun can reach you, sonars are pretty much the eyes and ears of a sub. Of course, that's not to say a round nose is the best choice out there. It isn't, as we explained to you at the start of the video. But the thing is, at least in theory, the ideal nose shape for a sub would be at least a little different if there wasn't a big sonar dome inside it. Remember, in addition to minimizing flow noise and resistance in water, the shape of the bow is also based on the internal architecture of the boat. The bow is also the part of the boat with the torpedo tubes that simply won't fit in a conical or fish-shaped bow. So, that's another tactical reason why most modern subs have a circular nose. Now, you might be wondering, why do we only refer to modern subs in the title? Well, that's cause round noses haven't always been the way for navies in the past. Prior to the Cold War, most subs had a somewhat pointy bow. That's cause back then, subs functioned more like boats and spent more time near the water's surface. And because they spent most of their time near the surface, they needed to have a pointed bow to cut the water. Remember, older subs didn't have the luxury of a nuclear reactor, so they needed regular bouts of fresh air for the engine to keep working. This design shift from long tapered noses of older submarines to the round ones we see today mirror the latest advancements in technology and our understanding of hydrodynamics. For modern subs, which operate while fully submerged in water, a cigar shape is also the best shape for stealth reasons. That's right, a round bow reduces the sub's acoustic signature, making it a lot harder for enemy subs and ships to detect the vessel by sonar. But what about other bow shapes? There are, of course, ship-shaped bows, or elliptical, conical, or hemispherical ones. After a series of tests and experiments, it was found that a ship-shaped bow had high resistance, making it less than ideal for an underwater environment. A hemispherical bow also had high resistance, compared to fish shapes and conic bows that showed the lowest resistance, while elliptical and conical ones were somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. But resistance is by no means the only factor to consider. There's also the sheer strength of a sub. Traveling at a depth in which water pressure is bone-crushingly high, a round bow is proven to be stronger than a flat or pointed bow and better able to bear the pressure of deep ocean depths. Wondering why? Well, a round or cylindrical shape is able to distribute the pressure and stress of the water evenly. It also minimizes the weak points or joints of the submarine, which reduces the risk of cracks or leaks. Which means, if you were to add a pointy bit in front of the blunt end, 
you will actually be adding extra surface area and increasing skin friction. This in turn increases the forces of drag as opposed to reducing them. It is for these reasons the most efficient shape for a body as it passes through a fluid is a raindrop shape. Kinda why raindrops are shaped like, well, raindrops. If you enjoyed breaking down the science of sub-designs with us in this video, make sure to hit subscribe as we explore more fascinating things about ships and subs in the future.